Our next question, Jim, was sent in on Twitter using the hashtag corny drive through from Tony Barker. I was watching 1989 NWA and Jack Victory is all over the board here. He was a Russian assassin, a blackmailer, a Secret Service agent, and then a New Zealand militia member. Why do you think Jack had such a hard time settling in on one gimmick? Because they, he didn't have a hard time settling in. They kept changing it on him because he was a nice guy and he had worked hard and they'd signed him to a contract and, and then if, if they stuck him in that screwy fucking loser leave because he was the one that had to, to be in it uh, to have the match uh, at Chi-Town Rumble, right, with the midnight and the supposedly original midnight. Yeah. And he came back as something else, but he, he was, the, I think that's when he was the secret service guy. Paul E. liked him, wanted to use him, you know, in some fashion, but it just, it was, it was just stupid. They just had him do one stupid thing pretty much after another, or if the thing wouldn't have been stupid originally, like with Paul E., whatever he wanted to do with him, but then somebody else would fucking change it and make it stupid. Um, he was he was a good worker and a good dependable guy. And finally, I think the New Zealand militia thing he settled in for a while and they had some fun with. But it just it I mean that that era of WCW they were all over the page with everybody. That's when Heard was wanting to fucking make Flair Spartacus for fuck's sake. I don't actually remember. Did they ever do anything on TV to explain any New Zealand heritage of Jack, Jack Victory at all or anything? No, it was because of uh, Little Brook, right? He was the manager. Did did he actually cause him to form an allegiance did, with the New Zealand militia? Well, I th- no, you know, it was uh, Rip was in it because Rip was was the flag bearer for the sheep herders, and then right. Rip joined the militia, and then and then enlisted Jack Victory because Jack didn't Jack wave the flag for the sheep herders somewhere and maybe I'm thinking of uh, UWF actually UWF in mid south he was so he had that and then they got little brook because that's the only midget they could find from the United (laughs) Kingdom I honestly and truthfully it was a whole and I would love little brook little brook was a great guy but they they brought him in as the as a visual joke to to fucking order the big guys around wait a minute I don't remember were they put together during your time on the booking committee I don't know if there was origination was during my time, but I was there in, in some fashion. Um, I, if you're asking me, was it my idea? No, I, I can't say it was. No, no, no. I was not accusing But, uh, well, I would, I would, you know, uh, I liked all of those people, but I don't know if I would have done that. But, we, you know, we, we certainly welcomed it with open arms when we were handed it. What would you think of Rip Morgan? You never hear his name anymore. Uh, Rip was a great guy too. They were easy to work with those guys. We had a number of matches with him, but Rip was, it was cool in the locker room, fun to hang out with. He was a dedicated guy. You know, he, he, they're just, when the business constricted in the, you know, early nineties and you know, it was almost impossible to make any money anymore. A lot of guys fell by the wayside. The best thing Jack victory did. And unfortunately it was relatively a short period of time, but Great tag team, underrated tag team, Jack Victory and John Tatum. I thought they were great together. Yes, yes, in Mid-South. 